I think, you know, obviously the some of the biggest difference between, say, an Indy car and this is what I've watched, you know, with the cup cars around here is, is, is your turn in. And to me, the, this place, for, you know, the, the, one of the key things for this place, for me anyway, it was entry. And I, and I get old pretty true most anywhere. You know, anytime, you, anytime you're having trouble on your exit, you look at your entry. Yeah. Our, uh, you, you might know Ken Howe as our director of racing competition. Mm -hmm. He's a sports car, sports car guy from South Africa. And he always has a great way of breaking things down. And he uses the analogy of a baseball pitcher that where the ball ends up, it's all determined by when it's <laughs> leaving his hand. And it's That's just right. like a, a race car going into a turn. Yep. What happens at the entry immediately affects what's going to happen at the exit. Exactly. I've, I've listened to guys over here just fighting and struggling. I can't get my exit. My exit this and cars doing this and still that. Well, it's all about backing up and taking a look at the entry. That determines it. And most of our, most of the guys that come into our cars early on, they're new. They're, the normal tendency is to, you know, is to do this, roll in and get down to the paint. Uh huh. Then I look where I'm going if I don't turn the wheel. Oh yeah, you got a tunnel of turn line. You know, and then you got, then you got to crank the thing. So if the car is pushing or loose, you've just increased it where you had to lift. Sure. You had to pedal it more, and then it's then you're dead all the way down the straightaway. And it, you know the way, kind of the rule of thumb for me, and just standard place to start was if I get manager right, I go entry apex to exit apex with with very little correction on the wheel. Yeah. If I have to wind more in. I enter too early. Took it too early. Got to the paint too soon. Late apex, you know, third, like a third of the way around the corner. For us, this corner is so, for turn one, is so different than turn three for us. I don't know about an open wheel car, but turn one here in Indy is probably the toughest corner for us, I'd say. Yeah. It usually is for our cars, too. And, and a lot of the times, that's the prevailing wind direction. Okay. Bringing you in to, to one, usually harder than three. It tends to blow the car out. So it's it's kind of a, on average, it usually one is usually the toughest, toughest. for us too, yeah. It's three, we don't really have, I mean, we, we do have to drag a little brake and, and certainly get out of the gas. Uh, but three is much more of a fluid, easy yeah. corner to open up the entry and you get to. Yeah. Turn one, our cars, we've got such a limited level of grip in a short period of time that we've got to slow it early and slow it a lot because it almost seems off camper in turn one. Yeah. And then you get one real opportunity to get the momentum going to the paint and then you're just kind of hanging on Yeah. <laughs> for us. Yeah. Uh, and, and it seems too like as you climb and it's helpful for us to get up onto the, not necessarily the curb, but to get inside the paint down yeah. one. It, it gets the car to the right rear and we'll finally get a turn for us. Yeah. Because we'll roll in so tight and then you're just hoping to get enough of the paint to make a turn. Yeah, you kinda, it kind of jacks the weight, hooks the left front. And our car's the same way. If you know, if I had the car where I wanted it for qualifying, uh, for balance, I couldn't really get below the paint. Really? It'd be way too loose. You know, it'd try to spin me. If I had the car balanced, you know, I'd, I'd need to stay up into here. But if wow. the car is a little too tight, you know, then I'd go down and hook the left front. I see. It's just amazing to me to look like as we come off the two, look all the way down that damn straightaway to know that you're not supposed to lift when you get to the end. <laughs> it's just outside of my realm of, of thought, you know. But it's you know it's like anything you, you get used to it after a while. And, and, and we usually you know you, you start out just adding down force and, and get enough grip to where you get yourself comfortable. Sure. To get in over that hump without lifting, and a lot of times you sneak up on it. You keep a little throttle on you lift early when you start building up to speed come out of the throttle back here but not out i see leave a little throttle on and that helps keep the thing loaded as you go over that hump yeah that is a big hump for and us and then too. and then start getting the throttle back down and you start working those two points together where you lift a little less a little you know a little later and pick it up a little earlier work those points together until finally you get you know obviously you get through wide open through two and four first sure which starts getting you comfortable getting wide open through the corner and then start working on one and three. But it's but again you put downforce on you get 
get the car where you can do that, and then you start trimming it off. That's where the work begins. Start trimming it off to where, you know, I'd get it to where I had, where I absolutely couldn't make it through here wide open. I couldn't make it through three wide open. Then you put a fresh set of tires on it and hold your breath and qualify <laughs> and leave it wide open, and hopefully you get, you know, you get everything right. But it's, it's still, it's always just still about entry. If I got my entry wrong. There's no need of I see guys hit the fence on the other end of the corner I think why? I know right here if I'm gonna hit the fence over there or not. If I if I got that part wrong wrong, it's gonna be wrong out the other side. See watching and I have to give Brian Newman credit where credit's due. And I you know he came from sprint cars, midgets and all you know, that form of open wheel, but he brought in the extreme arc into the corners for our, for our sport from what I saw yes. I felt like I was kind of pushing the envelope and it just was a natural thing for me and in practice I could see where I was pushing the line wider and wider and, and then you'd watch Newman and he was up there in the dirty stuff yeah like, god dang so now I mean you know everybody yeah. in the sport's doing it I remember watching him do that and I'm thinking yeah there you go yeah really amazing to see him do it and, and he won a bunch of pulls doing that yeah. stuff it, it might not be the race line necessarily because you know then the qualifying and race are two different mindsets. But if you can do it, yeah, yeah. even in the race, but but then you're leaving the door open and that kind of thing for traffic. But it's it's about lengthening the straightaway. Sure. You get that later entry. Always try to shape a corner like this. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so you straighten it out on the start. You know, if I've got an understeer on the exit. You get a nice later entry. Get it down to the two-third mark, and then hold it a beat or two longer, then unwind it, coming off. Yeah. Start unwinding the thing, which I'm, I'm sure you guys do the same thing. Definitely. You know, you got your two-third mark. Hold it a beat longer, and then you can start unwinding, coming off out where you want it. The sooner, I, the sooner I can start unwinding it, the longer the straightaway. I think our cars, we've had the luxury of more power than, than grip, and, and for a long time more gear than we really needed as well. Yeah. And here in the last three or four years, NASCAR has gone to a, a gear rule and things, and we're a lot lower in RPM, where we don't have that luxury yeah. um, that we had in years past. And finding, you know, two or three hundred more RPM, minimum RPM than the next guy, is everything right now. Yeah. Uh, so a wider arc. I mean, even like Montoya right now, he's he, some guys like myself. I need something to chase a line or a painting scene for whatever reason. Juan will just run in the middle of the track and have a lower or have a higher minimum RPM, spin center in the turn, yeah. and come thundering off the corners. Yeah. Some of the starts of the 500, how scary those things 
500 with you guys three wide. You never knew what in the world was going to happen, you know? <laughs> I tell you, I can't imagine running a stock car around here. I mean, that's, that's, that's got to be tough. It's, it, it's like driving a Suburban. You know, you just have to get that mindset. Yeah. It, it'll run a lap. I mean, there's oh, plenty yeah. of motor. There's more motor than you really need. Yeah. <laughs> but you just you have to drive it through the corner like a Suburban in a way. And once you get that right front howling at you and pushing and it's just, it's just <laughs> the car is like, nope, not, not going to do it. So. Now you're talking about gun done. The thing about not lifting down the other end of this log straightaway. When I, when I reverse that thought, thinking about running down through in a stock car with the kind of horsepower you guys have, <laughs> the speeds are running, and thinking about getting that much weight turned. Change the direction. Yeah, change yeah. the direction on it. We have a lot of fun with two and four, especially in qualifying trim. Um, you know, we'll, we'll get through three. You know, you lift a little early, and early back to the gas is really important because you, uh, you have such low RPM through the short shoot for us. And as we're still building, um, we can get through here just about flat, maybe just a slight breathe on, on entry to make sure the fronts actually bite and then, then down, but it's as close as we really can come to run flat and turn. So two and four while the way trim are blast. Yeah. Just kind of daring yourself and make it through there. Yeah. And, and, and that's a, what, you, what you just said there is basically what we do in one and three. It's that same kind of feeling I you're see. talking about. That's the fun, that, that borderline, uh, Starts quivering, but you want to leave it down. <laughs> like, no, I, I was flat. They look at the data trace yeah, and the right, line is shaking. It's bouncing on a stop. Well, that's the same thing, and, and you know, we, we try to do it one and three, the same, but, but it's the same feel as what I was getting at. Yeah. And what you're experiencing there on and being fun, that fun part of trying to leave it down. Tough, man, especially when you don't run flat often. Yeah. And I ran flat. No, you didn't look. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget the first time I ever went flat to turn well, three, turn three and four Phoenix. Oh wow. First time I ever made it. I mean it, it took it took a lot of laps after I got to finally got to the place that I I was pretty sure it would make it. It still took a few more laps before wow. I got up the nerve to actually leave it and, wow. and, and push hard enough on a stop that I knew I was flat, you know, and, and, and uh, I had to talk to myself. Wow, man, that, that is, that, did you run one and two flat? There? No, close. Close? Yeah, really? I, yeah. Such a tight radius. Yeah, come off the corner, come off the hump, start to the bottom of the track, and just before I'd get, get down to the paint, I'd have to come off the stop a little bit and wait just a beat or two and then, and then right back down. And then left it flat through, made it flat through three and four. Wow. So it was it was close to being a flat lap run. Really. Yeah. Pulling like five, over five Gs. I just ran that uh, Grand Am race in Watkins Glen and finally had a chance to run the boot. Oh yeah. Man, what a neat experience. And you know the bus stop is there, of course, nowadays. Yeah. But we'd come out of the bus stop in third and uh, would get flat through carousel but just a slight breathe you know a little lift of right half three quarter throttle and get it back down and coming up through the gearbox leaving it and I I don't think I've ever felt the g-forces like that. that was such a cool experience yeah I like that the long track it's really neat down there yeah so you come out of there and then you go to the laces in that uh, blind entry to, you really don't have any reference points for your braking marks you're like yeah. I can't see the curb even until you until you're on it. You're like, whoa. Yep. Yeah. Those are always fun. I mean, it, the elevation change tracks where you had the blind corners and get everything set up ahead of time. It's, it's like running the desert. Yeah. You never knew the corner. Never knew it was on the other side of the hill. How much out front racing did you do? I did a lot. A lot, right? Yeah. I remember seeing some pictures of you in a buggy yeah. when I was younger. Yeah, we started uh, we started on motorcycles, you know, motocross, desert, TT, and then, then went into the mama's friends going to get hurt on a bike. So we ended up building a Volkswagen <laughs> buggy and started running the short drive truck and stuff at Ascot. 
learned so much there that applied everywhere. I agree. I mean, you know, you, you said that you said that buggy run a 500, 400 mile or an 800 mile lap that you you can't memorize. Yeah. You've got to get the most out of eight quarter the one and only time you go through it. So the focus level, the concentration level that it takes to stay focused for six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 18 hours. Yeah, yeah. When I got an Indy car in three, four hours, it was a, it was a snap as far as the focus. Yeah, that, the focus there I lacked. And what, what was kind of backwards for me is um, I was doing some uh, desert racing and then my stadium career got going and I got up into the trucks and was racing against Roger and Roger Jr. in the trucks. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was a five minute battle at yeah. 100%. <laughs> and then I, they put me in a class eight truck, in a trophy truck. And uh, I did, I won my first race in the class eight series. So then they moved me up to the trophy trucks and they put me in that unlimited suspension vehicle and all that technology. Hell, I, there was one race I took out the, I crashed and took out the first mile marker. I mean, I just could not make, couldn't figure out how to stay on the road. And in 95, that was all in 95. Um, the 1000, we were running from uh, Tijuana to La Paz. Mm -hmm. And just before the sun came up, um, I was hustling the truck in the night and, and dozed off and just made a mistake and crashed. Spent a you know, day, day and a half before the crew got to me. <laughs> And since that day, I, I knew that I just I had to change how I was racing, yeah. and and I went from being the fast guy that would never win a championship to now people consider me being one of the you know one of the points racers and, and not as aggressive on track. Yeah, I'm like if you only knew what I used to do. I mean that that is and that again that is one of the oops, that is one of the the main things the desert taught me. The pace is fast enough to win and slow enough to finish. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, yeah. And, 